Uh, hello everybody, um, today in this video we're gonna uh, continue the phase equilibrium and net transfer uh, discussion that we uh, were talking about last time. So last time we saw how we do calculate the uh, bubble point and dew point and today we're completing and actually we uh, we uh, discussed that part of the bubble and dew point before because it's really important to know this before we go ahead and discuss what we're gonna t talk about today. So actually today we're gonna talk about uh, one uh, uh, process of uh, uh, separation that's really uh, famous in chemical engineering or in the process uh, uh, plants which is the flesh uh, flesh separation and um, we're going to talk about the concept of flesh separation how it works and uh, the the uh, uh, the reason it, it does the separation and then we will see the governing equations and how uh, we can do the calculations and again today we'll do the same thing we'll just discuss the uh, uh, thing and uh, see how it works and then next time we'll see how we do this in Excel <clears throat> um, so uh, this is what we said last time we have the liquid vapor uh, phase diagram I mean the temperature composition phase diagram and this is the vapor liquid vapor and the liquid curve and we said that this is the dew point and this is the, the, the bubble point and we said that this wet region uh, that's highlighted in blue now is the region which is the uh, uh, place of interest now we need to uh, know this region well because it's the region where the uh, liquid and vapor separate into two phases spontaneously without any uh, thing you need to do just put the uh, force the system to reach this um, region so um, how flashing works actually so what happens is when you have uh, uh, your uh, system like uh, liquid and vapor in this region then it will spontaneously split into two uh, phases uh, um, liquid uh, with uh, composition X and vapor is compo composition Y and X and Y both are uh, in equilibrium and they have different composition than the initial initial composition of the um, uh, feed and then um, this is the flashing you just uh, put the system to this point and it will spontaneously uh, split um, and for distillation actually what you do is that you cool this uh, vapor a little bit so it reaches another point inside the liquid vapor uh, region and then it splits into two phases so it's another tray and the same for liquid you heat it a little bit then it reaches another point and then you split it so you have different uh, compositions at different places in the same tower um, so you can say that the uh, distillation is just group of flash separators in series and it's just uh, uh, in one place um, so how can you push your system to reach these flashing conditions and actually you have two uh, approaches the first one is by changing temperature which we which is the more um, easy thing that comes to your mind first you have like a liquid and then you heat it then it reaches somewhere here and then you do the same for vapor you cool it till it reaches somewhere here and then you're done or the other way which is uh, very common in the process plants actually is by changing the pressure so let's say you have your uh, system here and it's liquid and then uh, you want to uh, push the system to reach the uh, wet region and when uh, uh, when it's not possible to change the temperature or it's not um, a very uh, uh, recommended to change the temperature then one other option is to change the pressure and as we uh, remember from the uh, previous, pre previous videos you can change the pressure to change the uh, boiling temperature so if you reduce the pressure then the wet region would move or shift to uh, at the bottom till it reaches that place and then uh, your system is uh, in the wet region so either way would work it just depends on the process and the flow sheet and what's the best thing to do um, in your system so you have um, a very common thing that you can see in the flow sheet either to see a cooler or heater to change the temperature before the uh, your stream enters the flash separator or a throttling valve to reduce the pressure so the system is in wet region when it goes into your uh, flash separator so let's see how we do the calculations actually the calculations are pretty simple you have your feed and you know the feed flow rate and you know its composition and you know that there is a vapor that's coming at the top with the composition y and liquid at the bottom with composition x and you have as many components as you want it doesn't matter if you have three four five ten twenty it doesn't matter and then um uh so the, the calculations are simple first you have the material balance then you just the overall material balance it's you say that this feed equals l and v so it's pretty simple and then you have component material balance that f uh, multiplied by xf equals v plus uh, multiplied by oops i'm sorry oh oh wow i think i'm doing something wrong oh here we go 
I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, and then you have the feed multiplied by x feed equals L multiplied by x uh, uh, i plus y v multiplied by y. And this is applied for each and every component you have. Um, and the final uh, equation is the equilibrium relation, which is the relation between these two output streams that x uh, equals y equals k multiplied by x. So um, the calculation or the final equation is going to be a combination of all these equations. So keep in mind that y equals k multiplied by x. And the first step we do is to plug this in here. So you have l plus v multiplied by x feed equals l x plus v y. This is what we have. And then by some simple mathematical uh, simplifications, you would reach this form. So you have x equals l plus v divided by l plus v multiplied by k, and this is all multiplied by x vi, uh, feed i. Um, and actually, uh, you have um, as many x's as you uh, have in your system. And then uh, if you see this, you know the temperature and the pressure, so you know k. Uh, because you know the temperature bubble and, and dew point, you know how to calculate them, and then you know how to uh, what, which pressure that you want and which temperature you want in between the bubble and dew point. So you know the temperature and pressure, which are important to know the k. So a k is is known. Um, the variables now that you have, and the x feed of course is known, and the only variables are l and v. So you need to do trial and errors on l and v to get the uh, right values of x. Um, so to make the calculations easy, uh, you can simplify the equation by dividing it by V. So you'll have this form. It's going to be L over V plus 1 over L over V plus K, plus K multiplied by XV. So instead of having two variables, L and V, you have only one variable, which is L over V. So it's going to be easier. And the other good thing about this is that you know that this is the ratio. So you'll have kind of limited uh, range of numbers. So you're not like, it's not be thousands or uh, decimal places like 0 0.000 something you will have something around 1 1 1.5 4 something like this um, so it's gonna be easier uh, for doing the calculations and um, uh, then you know how to calculate the X and Y if you assume a value of L over B and then the same thing you would uh, do the uh, trial and error till the summation of X and summation of Y and 1 as we'll see right now so finally the final form of the equation is this and then you will do trial and error till uh, on L over V till you make sure that sigma X and sigma Y both the, all the summation of all the liquid compositions and Y composition or the, or the vapor compositions are both equal to 1. It's not possible or it's not the right solution if you have sigma X equal 1 and sigma Y is not equal to 1. It's really important to keep that in mind. Um, so if L over V is calculated then you can simply uh, calculate the uh, V from um, uh, from the feed and the L over, L over V and the same time you can calculate L from the same thing. So you know L over V and then everything is, is going to be easy to calculate. So once you get L over V then your system is uh, or your calculation calculations are done. So uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind, we calculate the K from the vapor pressure or total pressure because we assume an ideal case. But if you don't have an ideal case, then it's going to be much diff more difficult than this. It would be uh, like fugacity and uh, activity coefficient and some of these uh, thermodynamic uh, uh, parameters which are really uh, not easy to calculate. And in this case, you would... Uh, maybe find another way you go to any simulation process like Aspen or so and then get the K values from there or you can find charts for some hydrocarbon compounds that are uh, commonly uh, used in these uh, separation processes and then you can get it from there but make sure that you don't use this if you have a very very high pressure or a non-ideal system um, so um, yeah, there are uh, just one uh, last thing we I, I like to point out before I finish this video is that there are some common mistakes that people do uh, or, or they think that they solve the system because the solver in Excel tells them that it's okay, but it's it's not okay. So the common mistake is that um, uh, they uh, they could find the sigma x equal one and sigma y equal one, but they would see that um, the one of these x i's or y i's are the same as the x uh, feed or the y feed. It's it's not uh, like the, something different, and if this is the case, then you would have a value of L over V, which is not logical. If you'll have like a very, very large value of, of L over V or a very small value of L over V. And in this case, I will just discuss this in, a, in, a, in the next slide. So let's say the solver of Excel, the Excel solver gave you a value of L over V, like 
100,000 or 10,000 or something like this, which is a very, very large number. So in this case, then the 1 and k would be much smaller than the L over V. In this case, you would have xi would be almost equal to x field, and yi would be equal to uh, almost equal to k multiplied by x field. So in this case, you may might have put a, an initial value of L over P, which is very big, and then it was easier for Excel to go to this route instead of going to the right solution. So you would assume a lower initial value and then do the iterations and see if it's solved, but then it's, that was the problem. If not, they will go to this in a few slides. And the opposite, if you have L over V, it's a very small value, then you would have the L over V much smaller than one and much smaller than K, then you will have X equal X feed over K, uh, and y would be x feed. So you'll have the same problem. Uh, one of them equals x feed and the other is an, uh, any other value. So the same thing, you'd assume a bigger value of L over V and then you would do the iterations and see what happens. And actually I, I recommend that you assume a value of one which is kind of good value to start with and then uh, you'll not have the problem of very much big value or very small value. Um, if um, case 1 and 2 don't apply if you change L over V to smaller or bigger value and you still have this problem then um, the only uh, other option that you have is that your system is not in the wet region that's why your calculations cannot be done using these conditions so you need to check the bubble and dew point and the pressure and make sure that your system is in the uh, wet regions between the bubble and dew point uh, because this is very common sometimes Excel tells you it's done and you don't check the numbers and you find yourself having like very weird numbers so in this case you need to make this check um, so in the next video uh, we will see how to do these calculations in Excel and I'll see you then inshallah bye bye